right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Ducks and Pucks. Uh, this is your host, Mike Walters, along with my co-host, Eddie Jones. Uh, out for the last couple of weeks with uh, finals and the holidays and everything. And uh, we hope everybody out there had a Merry Christmas and um, wish you all a Happy New Year. Um, we're going to get right back into it and um, kind of recap some of the games from the month of December. The Ducks have been rolling. And uh, look over some um, uh, acquisitions that have gone on as far as uh, Briz Goloff and Heatley and uh, other news with the Ducks. But... Um, to get things started off, we'll go back uh, to the um, the trip that the Ducks took to Canada, and uh, in the beginning of that trip, Eddie, uh, the Ducks did pretty well. Yeah, we and played um, kind of Winnipeg we twice, we had anyway. uh, Edmonton twice, uh, and uh, we I won think all we predicted four that they'd win all four games. See, at the time, Winnipeg was struggling. Now they're doing a lot better. So if you look back, and the the two wins against Winnipeg were actually pretty big, but Edmonton had just ended what what was was it like fourteen game losing streak and. Um, not picking up two wins against them would have been pretty embarrassing, uh, especially at home and then and then in Edmonton. And I, I think then going on and winning the the last game in Winnipeg 4-1 kind of started them. Well, I thought was going to start a, a good trip to Eastern Canada, which turned out not to be so, but at least a good start to the road trip. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the Ducks uh, went into overtime in that first game against Winnipeg and ended up uh, pulling that one out uh, with uh, Kyle Palmieri's goal that, uh, you know, that sniper from the side of the net, which was a, was a good, uh, a really good goal. And I mean, that was a crazy back and forth game. So it was good to see the Ducks uh, pull that one out. Uh, like you said, uh, the, you know, the Jets have been doing better as of late. So that was a huge, huge uh, two points um, for the Ducks. Um, and then they, you know, they had the battles against Edmonton, which, you know, the Ducks won both those games, Eddie, but, um, you know, they were close games against Edmonton, uh, two to one and then, uh, four to two in the second one. But the second one was, uh, you know, actually three to two, technically, uh, Nate Thompson getting that empty netter. So even though we beat Edmonton, yeah, and, and Anderson's games, playing, um, majority you know, the, the Ducks are too, winning, so, but man, uh, we're winning a lot of, one of the main reasons Eddie. that they're actually still winning. Uh, putting up like I believe over 90 save percentage in, in all the games too and obviously with Getzlaff, um only having a, no points in the first game against Edmonton and having a point in 13 of the last 14 games definitely helps too with Perry out but uh, Belaski is still scoring, Kessler is still scoring uh, which is one of the reasons they, they won in uh, Edmonton and then going on and even getting goals from Paul Mary and, and Vaughton still uh, definitely helps them on, uh, moving forward too Yeah, I mean, well, and then the special teams came into play in the uh, the second game against the Jets. You know, uh, Silverberg got a power play goal. Nate Thompson had that shorthanded goal with that nice pass from uh, Getzloff. And then, um, you know, Ironman uh, Cogliano um, also got a shorthanded goal, too, in that one. The Ducks were rolling in that game. And, uh, you know, Anderson was on fire that game, too. Um, 30 saves out of 31 shots. And, uh, you know, it was the... Um, Looking over some of his stats, he actually set the uh, club record uh, for 10 wins this month uh, with a 10-1-1 record. Uh, he previously beating out um, Hiller and um, Jaguar and Bear, who all had won nine uh, wins uh, as the team record. So now he owns that record, Eddie. So, you know, Anderson's been on a roll. Yeah, well, I think like with Gibson getting hurt, he's going to be so the number one that, goalie for the Ducks. That kind of helped you know, definitely the rest of the no season. No one's going to want to start LaBarbera. Obviously, they showed they didn't want to start LaBarbera when – he was on the bench for five or six games when we, even with two back to backs when Anderson was starting and, and still struggling and, and you know, picking up nineteen, twenty starts in a row and then throwing Brisgalov into the fire and after signing him first game and he lets in six goals. So it looks like until Gibson gets back, Anderson's gonna start probably every single game. He's got a good enough record to start every every game too, but um, I think with Gibson eventually coming back, it's going to relieve a bit of the pressure on him because you know, as we see coming up and, and some of the other games that he's played um, back in November and, and October, and he struggles in a lot of the back-to-back -back games. You know, it's interesting to bring that up because then, you know, after the Ducks had played Edmonton twice, Winnipeg twice, they're on a roll. They go into Toronto we think, okay, we're going to do well. Anderson starts again, and, and Anderson actually had a poor game. Uh, one of the few games, I think, Eddie, where it wasn't a back-to-back -back where he had a poor game, 
Um, then, you know, the Ducks bring in Brzezgalov. Um, he gave up two goals late in the game. You know, he didn't, he didn't look poor in, in, in that game. He looked okay. And, um, you know, the Ducks uh, then come back, go to Montreal, have an emotional game with the uh, tribute to Saku Koivu. And the Ducks pull out that game, you know, two to one. Anderson, you know, back on form, uh, played great that game. Uh, and the Ducks pulled out that win by, by a, a one-goal margin. Then you get that back to back. Here we go. Okay, so we bring in Brzezgalov, and I mean, he he did awful in that game against the Senators, giving up six goals. So I, I think part of the question now is that is if Gibson comes back, is Brzezgalov going to go to Norfolk and Gibson? Uh, I think be the might backup, give him another chance, but it's probably that, before uh, Boudreau uh, might Gibson try to give back. Brzezgalov another Gibson chance. Gibson probably has a couple of weeks before he comes back. So. Um, with the games coming up, uh, there's probably well, there's no there's one back to back, uh, New Jersey, and then the Kings. He might get Brzezgalov might get a start against New Jersey, and then put Anderson for the Kings game. But other than that, um, there's no back to backs until the end of January. So, and I definitely see Anderson probably starting the back to back with San Jose and Chicago. So, if Brzezgalov's gonna get a chance, it's probably gonna be against New Jersey, if anything, and unless Gibson's back by then. But, yeah, Briscoe is probably the most likely candidate to get sent back down to Norfolk or, or traded to somebody, too. Uh, now, let's, let's talk about uh, Briscoe for a second here. You know, we because uh, we kind of just missed it when it came out. We did our last podcast. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people out there, um, basically, as soon as Brzezgalov got signed, everybody was basically going nuts. I mean, it was, you know, a majority of the people were happy about it um, all over social media and, and the emails I was getting and whatnot and the questions from, you know, fans and, and everything. And then uh, I can't remember how long afterwards, but I, I remember the same day they announced the contract. They said that the contract was um, 2.88 million cap hit. And based upon the rest of the season, it'd be about 1.8, 1.9 million. And then it kind of it shifted um, from what we saw, Eddie. Instead of you know almost everybody being four, now it was like, well, wait a second, time out. That's a lot of money. Um, and I remember I even asked Dan Wood the question about the price, and he um, you know he answered it during the duck game, and, and they thought it was okay. But I, it seems like there's a mixed review out there of the price. Then when he comes in and obviously does poorly in that centers game, and you know we lose six to two. You know, it, it it's a different uh, thinking now. I think about Rosgolov. I, I don't know. Do you think that um, you know the price was maybe too high? Or, it, it, like or, I was you know, already wrong with him at all. Thing, or, uh, what a, do you think? A pretty good gamble at the beginning of the season, and with the Ducks having a lot of cap space, you can sign, you can make some of these risks. But already taking risks on Stoner and well, which has paid off Heatley, which hasn't the Barbara, which really hasn't, and obviously now Rosgolov, which hasn't either. Uh, to be fair, he hasn't played an NHL game in, in almost over a year, uh, but his first two starts haven't been anything pretty. He's let in eight goals in, in two of the, the two right. games he's played, and only one of them he started, and he let in six. So, um, like I think he definitely deserves another chance, but mm-hmm. with the money they spent on him, even with the cap space they have, like I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have spent over one and a half on him, or you know maybe Heatley kind of money. Because uh, at least he was going to play on the first line. This is just a backup goalie, and and we already have La Barbara, who's going to who's capable of backing up, and and obviously them giving him that kind of money must mean Gibson is injury is a little bit more serious than they thought. So uh, if he can come out and have a couple good games, then he'll uh, like the the money will end up be worth it, be worth it. But uh, as of now, based on all the two games he's actually had, it. it like I can see why a lot of people are pissed off about it. Yeah, you know, and, and to be fair, I mean, obviously now we're talking about it. You know, a couple weeks after it happened, uh, you know, because everybody had their initial thought uh, when they signed him and then the money and what was going on. But also, you know, back at that time, the Ducks were kind of in a tough spot because. You had La Barbara, who had come in and played decent, like you had said, on different occasions, but then he's injured. You have Gibson that's injured. You have uh, Bob Koff that they've called up a couple times, but, you know, obviously they didn't feel like he was ready. So I think the Ducks were kind of in a pinch thinking, okay, what are we going to do? Because, you know, obviously you can't ride Anderson out, or, or, you know, any goalie for that matter. You can't always ride him out 
you know, 82 games a, a season, especially in back-to-back. You've got to have somebody worthy up there. So I think part of the deal with the signing, I mean, I don't agree with the price either, but I think part of the, the reason why it went down the way it did, Eddie, is just because yeah, I, I think I, I unless think Bob Cobb was, was ready, was, I, I think that's why Bob the Ducks had to go with uh, Brzezgala. On, on the bench again or something like that, but... <laughs> But if you if you're only gonna if, you, if that's the only reason you're signing him, um, like I, I get that it's only a year, right. but it, like at two point eight, there's nobody else at all interested in him. So I don't know how his agent somehow worked out a, a two and a two point eight million dollars for a guy who nobody has wanted for eight months, and like he's waiting for the, I guess because the Ducks didn't really have any leverage and the, he was they were in need of a goalie and he was really the only one available without having to. Or with Broder already gone and without having to trade for a goalie, um, 2.8 was probably the settling price. And it, it's only a year, so the money is really paper money. It it, it doesn't it goes against the cap this year, but at the end of the season, he'll move on, Healy will move on, and the cap space will be spent more wisely, hopefully. But, yeah, I, I get what you mean with LaBarber being out at the time. And um, I, uh, we're just coming back from injury then. Um, it makes sense, but yeah, if Brzezgalov wants a better shot, he's gonna have to play well the next game if he gets another start. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the only thing I I would think is, man, I'd want to be his agent, man. I mean, I think that yeah. guy can uh, sell a cardboard box. I mean, geez, you know, I mean, he was able to get that kind of a deal. Um, you know, don't forget, he's still getting paid by uh, Philadelphia another 13, 14 years, uh, you know, a million a year. He got to, that one bought out, too. So, you know, he's going to be fine. That's for sure. Um, yeah, Eddie, I think uh, if he's given one more chance, it's going to be his last one. I mean, he's really got to come through and play well for that last game. Uh, if given yeah, one, yeah, that's um, for sure. otherwise, I think he's going to get um, sent especially down. Especially with his performance uh, against Ottawa up. and even the backup performance against against Toronto, which was really uh, an unfair game. Anderson had a pretty bad game, and uh, the Ducks outshot Toronto like 42-20. to 20. So it's an it's an unfair judgment in, in two games, but the way he's played, it kind of, uh, you know, you, you kind of can't really say anything else with, you know, the, the save percentage under 800 and a goals against average over six. Uh, he's probably the at least the worst in the league, even only in two starts. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the Ducks, obviously, after that, turned back to Anderson. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's been on a roll, as we've talked about. Um, in the last uh, three games, the Ducks played, uh, you know, we played the Sharks uh, tonight. And uh, three games ago, we played the Sharks. And, you know, it was a thriller. Uh, I was there in person, you know, like I usually am. And um, it was a, it was a good game. You know, uh, Ricard Raquel got his first uh, NHL goal in the uh, regular season. He's had one playoff goal. So that was good to see him do that. And, you know, the Ducks got behind and uh, Fowler came through with that late goal. And then the uh, the funny celebration of the uh, the barrel roll where he uh, kind of flopped on the ice um, to tie the game up. And then, yeah, right off know, the, uh, the, the guy power we got, play. Kessler came through. Uh, uh, he kept just, in the you know, zone minute, and Kessler ended up sniping in the top already. corner. But, yeah, it was definitely a goaltender battle uh, throughout the game. Andy Niemi had a, uh, a really good game, even though, you know, he led three goals, but he was just – just as good as Anderson, just one, one goal short in the end. But yeah, uh, it's nice to see Raquel finally get his first goal after you know at least thirty games now. We were hoping uh, he would help with the secondary scoring. So hopefully you know this kind of gets him on a roll, get the first one, and and hopefully he can get some more coming uh, by the end of the season. Yeah, you know, and speaking of people trying to pick it up, uh, you know, Rene Borka got his second goal as a Duck uh, in the next game when we played Phoenix. Uh, you know, the Ducks went all the way to the shootout and ended up losing in the shootout, which, you know, you can't really uh, fault Anderson in that in that game. I mean, he he played a really uh, great game. That You know, Ducks going to a 1-1 tie. And then in the shootout, that, uh, that funky shot, you know, um, where the stick mm. broke and the the blade went right to uh, Anderson's, you know, towards his head. I can't remember if it hit him in the face, the face or not, but it was right towards his head. And, uh, you know, it was just an unfortunate thing. The Ducks ended up losing that game 2-1 to one in the shootout, but, it, you know. Yeah, that, and um, you, you can't really blame the way it went. a whole you know, lot of break on, on the, Anderson and, he, and even on there. some of the, the players on the Ducks team because Devin Dudnick, uh 
was pretty much un- unbeatable that game, other than Rene Borg's goal. He, uh, he, he stopped 30, uh, 35 or 36, and obviously them winning on the, the fluke goal, but he, he stopped everybody in the shootout. I just think it was kind of questionable, though, with, with Danny Heatley taking the first shot in the shootout. I don't know if that was um, Boudreau trying to get him going or something. Obviously, he ended up missing it, but um, you know, with a lot of other guys... We possibly could like obviously the regulars and and Silverberg and, and Kessler going, but you know maybe even you know I know gets off eventually shot, but either maybe putting him first or Rene Bork scored a goal that night, put him in there. Um, but yeah, I guess he lead just to try and get him going, and obviously it didn't work out. But yeah, I agree with you. I you know I was going, what are you mm-hmm. doing right now? I don't know why that that call was made other than like you said maybe to try to jump start him and obviously it, it, it didn't work out uh for him and we ended up uh you know losing that game and then uh you know but the ducks came back um in their most recent game against vancouver another exciting one vancouver you know started out one nothing uh in the second period and then um uh, Francois was back in action, you know, and got his first goal of the season, which was nice to see. It was a it was a bullet uh, shot, a slap shot, uh, to get the game tied. And then, uh, kind of on a weird play in the overtime, you know, uh, Smith Pelly drives hard to the net, and the, and the puck ends up uh, sitting right there in front of the net. And uh, Fowler said that he <laughs> shot it, didn't even know where it went, but you know, because he had another awesome celebration, <laughs> he also couldn't see where the puck went too. As uh, as he and De- uh, Devonte Smith Pelly ran into each other and. Uh, just another comical moment, but uh, you know he came through with a big goal in the Ducks. Yeah, and uh, another one Vancouver goal out, uh, uh, win or loss, and, kind uh, of we'll overtime to, especially against Vancouver this uh, season, uh, with all the games going down to shootout or overtime. But um, I, I think, to be honest, though, this is probably one of the best games defensively the Ducks have had, with um, how well Vancouver has done scoring goals this season with Verbata and, and the Sedins all scoring, and, and them getting some goals from uh, Dorsett and, and Horvat and. Limited them only to, to 14 shots, um, and, and obviously Miller shutting the door um, most of the way for, for Vancouver. Defensively, you know, with uh, Fowler and, and Boschman picking up both of the goals, I think this was, the one, if not their best, one of their best games um, of the season. No, I agree, and I think that the defensive effort has definitely been the key. Uh, you know, in the, in the last you know three four games, you know after after having those couple terrible ones in uh, Canada, it's picked up. And I think you know for tonight's game, the New Year's Eve game, which I'll be heading out to here shortly, that's going to be you know important too against the Sharks because the Sharks have lost their last couple games. They've had trouble scoring. Yeah. And I think if the Ducks can put together another well, solid yeah, well, that was one of the first games that all, all six of them have finally been back. I mean, we should be able to take them out so. um, And obviously, they, they, they showed why it was so, you know, everybody was so optimistic at the start of the season with having all six of them healthy and with some of the spot treatments we've had to add with, you know, getting Brewer and obviously he's hurt and, and Fistrick being out this season and, and having to add guys throughout the season, Colby Roback and a bunch of other guys. So, Having the the initial six guys back is is going to be key, and if, if Perry can slot back in the lineup, uh, it'll be the first time they're almost 100% healthy. You know, only missing really, um, I guess Jackman, Palmieri, and and uh, Gibson, but um, that'll be the probably the most healthy they've been since opening day. Yeah, you're right, and and you mentioned uh, Perry, and and at least at the time of this, you know, we're gonna put out the podcast today, obviously, but the time of this is uh, Perry still a game time decision. And it, I've heard some reports that he may be playing tonight. We hope he is, but uh, just so everybody out there understands, it's it's still uh, he's still got a questionable uh, tag uh, labeled on there. But um, yeah, as you mentioned, having them all back and being healthy, and then if Perry on the offense, I mean, you know, the Ducks should. I mean, not that we haven't been rolling because we've been playing well in December, like we talked about. We needed them to do uh, after a poor uh, November. Now I think they're going to roll, you know, and I think it, I mean, it's not going to be an easy game tonight, but that you know, it's one that they can win. And then uh, on Friday they're going to play, you know, a Blues team that's kind of been up and down this season. You know, they they've um, won half of their last ten games and. Uh, They've got a guy by the name of Tarasenko that's just been rolling this season with uh, 22 goals, leading their team with uh, 39 points. So he's going to be someone that, 
the Ducks are going to have yeah, to shut out uh, or at least slow easier, down or um, try to going somehow. Going into Sunday on, uh, and having to Friday face Nashville, who, um, you know, with mm. games in hand and, and, and based on points are are probably the the best team in the league and um, definitely one of the most improved this season too. And uh, really being led by Shea Weber again and, and Philip Forsberg, who's, you know, candidate for the Calder Trophy this year. So, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be three tough games, and and you know picking up maybe maybe four or five points from from those games will will be probably our best scenario. I think getting a win tonight is important because uh, San Jose is in the Pacific Division, and then maybe you know against uh, St. Louis or Nashville, if if we can pick up all six points, obviously that's ideal. But um, it's gonna be the two hard games. I think Nashville is gonna be the hardest game, just coming off you know only one day of rest after a, a game against St. Louis, but. You got home ice advantage, so that that's definitely going to be a plus. Yeah, I agree with you, Eddie. I think you know, ideally, you know, six would be good, but I wouldn't be too upset if they pulled out with four or five for sure. And I I think it's going to be interesting to see, especially if uh, Perry comes back, how they roll in the next uh, two three games. Um, you know, looking forward to the the season. There's some other news going on with the Ducks that have come up. Um, uh, the latest one was the NHL was investigating um, the workout that the Ducks did uh, right after Christmas break, which uh, if you're not familiar, you know, out there uh, for, for those of you in the fans, uh, the CBA, the uh, collective bargaining agreement, um, doesn't allow for the teams to have an official practice during the, the Christmas holiday break. But what that means is it's, it's they can't have an official practice as far as with the coaches uh, trainers and whatnot, and my understanding um, is that yeah, Getzloff, yeah, and uh, it, organized it, the practice, um, Eddie, and I think it was just the players only. Uh, the, correct. The, the NHL is basically trying to determine if if Getzlaff held the workout um, on his own, or if there was encouragement from the team, or if the team had any involvement in uh, his decision to hold the practice. And obviously, Getzlaff says um, it was his idea. He felt he needed to skate, and uh, it, it was pretty informal. They kind of just. You know, pass the puck around for about 20 minutes, and, and you know, and the, the the whole team wasn't even there, and, and some guys were only there for five minutes. So, I I really don't see like he, even he said he has no idea why they're investigating. I I don't see why it's such a big deal, um either way. I I get that it violates the bargaining agreement if the the team's involved, but he said the team wasn't there. Uh, there's been proof that there's no there was no coaches there. Um, there's really no way to prove if. If somebody asked him to to hold a practice, if Boudreaux or or one of the coaches said, you know, you maybe you should hold a practice um, today and just bring some of the guys in, uh, he said it's his own idea. So I don't really see why they have to look more into it. Uh, I really don't see anything coming from it. I don't see any suspensions or anything. I, I'd be really surprised if if there was any uh, any punishments doled out. Yeah, I agree, Eddie. I, I don't think anybody's going to be suspended. There's going to be any fines. I, I remember hearing uh, reports too that even some of the family members were there. That it was just a very, it was just whoever wanted to get together and skate kind of a deal. It wasn't uh, structured, you know, formal practice like you said. It was just like a 20, 30 minute kind of a workout deal. So, you know, I think they're making a big, big something out of nothing. So I, I, I think the Ducks will be fine. I don't think anything will come from it. If it does, you know, we'll report it as we usually do. But I'll be surprised. Um, some other news too, um, you know, which was not really a surprise, but, uh, the ducks, uh, sent Danny Heatley on waivers, Eddie. Um, he's now currently in Norfolk, uh, no other team, he cleared waivers and no other team picked him up, uh, put on a poll question there, you know, whether or not people agreed with that. And I can't remember what the percentage was, but it was almost like a hundred percent. Everybody agreed. And, uh, I think you and I, both yeah, agree. And it's just, I know it's you just kind of been a disappointment in regard for, to the, uh, Heatley uh, situation. Not, this maybe not big things, but about some decent secondary scoring from Heatley, if not on the first line, but on the second. And obviously we've got nowhere close to what we thought was going to happen. I thought at, at best he'd get, you know, 20, 25 goals and, you know, I don't know how many games he's played so far, at least 10, and he has maybe not even a point if, if one assists. So um, it's definitely been a failure, and, and I don't think anybody's surprised. Uh, I think almost everybody, except some Danny Heatley fans, are, are pretty happy that he's being sent down and and uh, making way for some of the younger guys that come through and some of the guys coming back from injury. And obviously another thing that happened too, and there's no surprise, is that uh, Stefan Freiberg uh, – uh, after, sorry, yeah, Max Freiberg was uh, sent down to the AHL um, with some of the guys coming back and with Perry a game time decision. 
uh, which was also really no surprise. He was really only called up for that one game with, with Healy not playing. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people are happy and I, I definitely know I am with the, the production that he's kind of put forward. And, and at, le- at least if, if he's not going to score, there's really been no effort from him either. His skating is kind of lackluster and he's kind of just slugged around the ice. So um, I, I don't really think it's going to be a big issue for the Ducks. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't think it will be either. Because I mean, you've got all these other players now. As far as you know, you know Renee Bork's in there. Uh, Eden has started to pick up his game a little bit. Silverberg's picked up his game a little bit. Um, Smith Pelly as well. You know, I don't, I don't really see him really fitting in the lineup. Anyways, I just don't, I don't see it from him. Like you said, the effort's been, you know, part of the issue. And I think with the Ducks. The way they're going now, I mean, um, it looks good. You know, uh, the only thing really we got to wait and see is uh, Jackman and uh, Paul Mary getting back. But, I mean, the Ducks are a depth team, you know, and we've proved it this year in the three months that, you know, yeah, we've been winning games by one or losing by one. But, I mean, that's all it takes to win a game. And uh, even without, you know, uh, our, our number, yeah, and it's not number helping. one or number two um, star, hasn't Perry, or anything. Um, we're still able game to win. Streak right now with 12 points in, in eight games and, uh, almost leading the league. I think he's third in points, so that's uh, that's definitely helped too. And a, a lot of secondary scoring coming from you know Bolesky still and, and Kessler and Paul Mary when he's been in the lineup and uh, Fowler as of late. So yeah, it, it, people have been able to step up. But but getting Perry back, uh, you know the, the way he started the season, everybody thought he was gonna you know get maybe 50 again. But uh, being out from uh, more than 10 games now, um, that's looking not so possible. But Either way, it's going to be nice to get him back in the lineup and see if we can at least get 30 this season. Yeah, I mean, the way he started, we all thought it was going to be 50. And then obviously getting the mumps and getting injured, that that slowed it down. But um, I think he can still get up there 25 or 30 if he comes back and plays and is healthy the rest of the season. And uh, as you mentioned, too, you know, Getzloff's picked it up uh, while he's been out. I mean, how impressed are you with him? He's, you know, leading the team in points, which, you know, that that's not really a big surprise. But he's been doing a lot better in the faceoffs too, Eddie. And um, really, uh, t- you know, taking that captain role, uh, as he has before. But, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just, just really, really, right uh, obviously, you know, come through. He saw last year he's been shooting the puck very, very of this game. 30 goals. And he's, still got, he's got 12 this year, so he's looking to get around uh, around 25 again, maybe 30. Um, if he ends up scoring a bit more near the end of the season, uh, but yeah, he's he's definitely gonna get over 80 points, closer to 90, which we thought he'd pretty much get at the beginning of the season. And who knows when Perry comes back? If if the Ducks start to score more goals, he might pick up over 100. But yeah, I, I don't think I'm really surprised. Uh, I'm definitely impressed with how he's done. But you know, we we've seen this from Getzlaff every any time Perry's been out of the lineup or any time uh, somebody's needed to step up, it's, it's usually him, and um, he's done it again and. You know, you're looking to continue his point streak tonight, which uh, I really don't have any doubt he's probably going to do. He always picks, somehow picks up an assist somewhere throughout the game. Yeah, I think he's going to come through, um, like you mentioned, um, uh, either an assist or a goal or something. I mean, just the way he's been rolling with, no matter who his line mates are, if it's you know, Devontae smith Kelly. if it's Bork, if it's Maroon, it just seems like he, he's, you know, going to roll uh, and pr- uh, provide some points on the score sheet um, night in and night out. And, uh, you know, I guess finally the last real bit of news uh, for the Ducks is, you know, there's been some rumors out there and we try to cover what we hear. And Eddie and I, and I'm sure a lot of other people have heard the rumors of uh, Yarmir Yager. Um, you know, obviously with the failed Heatley experiment and, you know, the Ducks making a push to go all the way again this year, as we, you know, we've talked about from summer till now. Um, what do you think about Yager uh, coming to yeah, the Ducks? Yeah, that's, that's and, where know, it's confusing because some kind of a deal it's not out, like um, um, how Yager's do been it. struggling or, you know, he's not, as, he's not doing as good as he did last season. And, and that's where it's kind of, you know, scary. He picked up 67 points last year, which I think a lot of people were surprised with. Uh, you know, considering his age, he's verging on 43, and he's got tw- you know he's got 21 points this season in, in 37 games, which is which is pretty good. Um, but I don't know. Uh, he's he's definitely slower. Uh, like he he kind of fits in the 
in the same role as Heatley. Um, he's producing more than Heatley on a, on a team that doesn't score a lot of goals, but um, he, you know, is getting to Salani territory again. Is if you bring him in, is he gonna gonna perform? And and if you bring him in, he's gonna want to play on the first line no matter how he does. So. It, 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 when you bring a guy like that into the to the locker room, it can it can be good or it can be bad, and it's not like he's a guy that you can just send him down, you know, to the wa- to waivers and into the minors like Heatley. Um, so if you bring him in, you have to play him no matter how he plays, and you know, depending on what we're gonna give up, if if it's basically nothing, then I would say go for it. You know, if it's Heatley or Bizgalov or you know. A, a, a guy in the minors who, or a couple guys in the minors who we don't really see coming through, but I'm sure the Devils will want more for him, and um, I, I don't really see it being worth it. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, I mean, you know, he's got six goals and 15 assists, 21 points. I mean, obviously it's it's nothing wazoo or whatever, but I mean that that's what he's had with the Devils and. You know, like you said, on a team that's not not really producing, you know, tons of goals. But I mean, I think he could help uh, if the Ducks could bring him along and finish it out uh, the season with him. I, I mean, you could throw him on the top line with Perry and Getzloff, and they could probably really do some serious damage. But uh, I agree with you. I, I don't want the Ducks, you know, giving away like three draft picks or you know three or four players or some kind of a combination of draft picks and players for a guy that. We all know he's in the twilight of his career. I mean, he's got, you know, maybe a year, maybe two left. So, you know, would he help out? Yes, but we got to make sure that, you know, the price is right for this one and that the reward risk is going to come out in the Ducks' favor. Um, yeah. And I think, and like you said, I think no, the Devils might. With Perry coming back, you know, I don't think shop around and try and get a, a good price for their him. main problem. It, it's getting Gibson back. Like, if you look at. Um, a lot of the teams around the Ducks, and a reason why they're not ranked so high in the power rankings is because they've let, they've um, conceded 101 goals this season, which is a a lot more than you know Chicago, Nashville, St. Louis, and Vancouver, Winnipeg, all the teams that are around them. So, um, if, if anywhere needs to be improved, it it's maybe defense. I know there's been a lot of injuries or or getting Gibson back. I think it's just getting everybody back and and get and and not having any more injuries. I don't think bringing in Yager is is really necessary and, you know, having the same situation situation we had last year with, with Solani. Yeah, I agree yeah, like he's, I mean, he's like more said, than likely it's a really, really you know, good going deal. to a team like uh, Pittsburgh you know, or, can or somebody else. Somebody that's <laughs> looking for, <laughs> for a top-line winger. Yeah. I really don't think with, you know, even with Rene Bork already coming in, if uh, – Adding another winger to the to the fold is, is really necessary unless Edom is gonna get sent down. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think it's highly unlikely. Um and uh, you know, uh next month, just to remind everybody too that uh Tameless Line Night's coming up on uh January eleventh. Um, I know we put out an article earlier this month. We're giving away a couple of his hockey cards uh, to the people that uh, subscribe to the podcast, also to the blog. So make sure you get out there and do that. Uh, if you subscribe to both, uh, you double your chances of uh, you know winning one of those two cards. Um, obviously, it'll be two separate winners, uh, one card for each uh, person. So make sure you do that. And uh, just keep on following us. We uh, you know took a break, obviously, with the holidays and um, – finals and school you know things some other important things i guess uh, besides hockey eddie but uh um we'll be back at it uh doing the weekly podcasts you know usually um sometimes saturdays mostly sundays or mondays um and that's it for now and uh, let's go ducks and let's have a good new year the anaheim ducks are the stanley cup champions